introduce our next speaker, Jason Johnson, who is the Executive Director of Friends of Lake Warner and the Mill River. Hello again, everyone. <clears throat> We're um, sorry that we couldn't hear Beth uh, Wilson's presentation on Amherst and their stormwater upgrades that they've been doing. That's been really exciting work. Uh, but this is sort of a happy accident. We get to leap back into the historical and um, current situation that we have with our own lake. Um, so let me figure out how to share my screen. All right, can everybody see this? Yes. Whoops, this is, uh, well, this isn't the one that I wanted, but I'm gonna start with it anyway. Um, so I described yesterday sort of the, the detective work that need you need to do when you're sort of putting together a watershed restoration project and sort of knowing where you come from in the history of the ecological system. Um, Lake Warner was uh, dominated um, by this dam, first put in around 1670, and the, the deed records go back to 1653, where the Hopkins Academy is talking about needing a grist mill for the town, and the nearest grist mill was across the river in Hatfield. That was the very first one in this part of the valley, uh, on the other mill river across the, across the Connecticut, but you can imagine settlers and people wanting to get their corn more quickly or have their corn ground more easily. So this is the grist mill on the left. Um, it's a pre-1925 photo because this entire structure burned to the ground in 1925 and that was the last grist mill that was, uh, that was present at this site. Um, the original grist mill back as early as the early 1700s had been burned by Native Americans during the Indian Wars that raged up and down the valley. Um, thinking that you know if you lived in Deerfield you would have to come down to North Hadley to have your mill to have your um, your corn ground. Um, the, on the right is the Caleb Dickinson and Son broom tool and knife manufactory. So this is sort of a blacksmith shop also run completely on water power and you can see the infrastructure there on the right side of the, of the screen. Um, at this time, the dam would have only been about 13 feet high. This is a later shot after the mill is gone. And then you see the, the broom tool factory on the right and the various apertures that are left over from the mill system here. And the old Warner Bridge there. These are spectacular photos. Um, and we think that this is 38 hurricane coming in. Um, so we see the dam at, at serious flood stage, right? Um, at, at 17 feet high, the dam was raised by four feet in 1947. But at the time that this was taken, it would still only be 13 feet high. Um, even then, with the raising of the dam, it still a quarter of a foot higher than the 100 year flood event from the Connecticut River. So as you see the river backing up, you know, Warner Dam is still providing a, um, a run of the river type of dam situation. However, the ice dam that formed backed it up, backed up the Connecticut River and completely overwhelmed the dam. So this would be several feet over the dam spillway inundating portions of the uh, of the broom tool factory. Uh, there used to be an active livery too, boat livery, um, where people would rent boats and go and recreate on Lake Warner. So it has this, again, gener multi-generational recreational connection with the community and the pond. Um, this is the area more recently. It has not changed very much. Um, This goes all the way back to the early 1900s where there was a boathouse on the other side when the Scots owned this property and they owned the large farm to the 
um, the sort of south and the east of, of the lake, what's now owned by the Boisvert family. Um, this boathouse is also still standing and somebody has just purchased it and they're thinking about storing boats there again. And there's the same area this time of the current photo. All right, so we went through a bunch of aerial photos yesterday. I think I'll sort of skip through those. Showing the vegetation taking over. Let me jump to the other slide. So stop share. Okay, so when the dam was repaired in 1947, and, and this goes back to sort of what Ken is talking about, about the disruption to an ecological system. Um, is anybody seeing Jason's screen right now? No. I'm, all I'm seeing is all black. All uh, black. Field that says Jason Johnson has started screen sharing. I can't see it. No, me neither, Jason. Just wanna try uh, starting over? Well, I'm trying a new share. Here we go. Okay, so when the dam was repaired in 1947, and you've got to understand, if you're going back to the deeds, and then we also got fish and wild fish and game records, because Lake Warner is essentially a private pond, right? It's being run by the broom tool factory and the corn mill, and then sometimes those those mill um, privileges were split at one point in the deed, and so both of those entities sort of own the usage of the dam. So the responsibility, of course, to repair is always put upon one party and, um, and the state wanted to stock the, the water body. So they had these private pond agreements with John Howe. Um, so when the repair for the dam comes up, they actually find the original spill log from the 1670 dam. <laughs> it was a little bit upstream of where the dam currently is, but this is what they anchored and began the dam process with in 1670. This was unearthed in, in 1947. Um, this was the old Caleb Dickinson broom and tool factory. This is a little further downstream on Ferry Road prior to, oh. uh, prior to Warner Dam being used for the Dickinson broom tool factory. This is where they were operating. And there was actually a whole nother dam system downstream of the current location of Warner Dam that was used to fund a sawmill at one point centuries ago. Um, this is this is a shot of the corn mill, essentially again pre pre twenty five. Oh, there we go. Um, and the general store is seen from River Road. The general store, of course, they called this place the center. How North Hadley was known as the center because it was the center of activity. You know, there was really nothing going on north of here on on River Road or forty seven. And south of here, you had to get all the way to Hadley before you could buy any goods or anything. So this was a major operation. The store and the corn mill were, were centers of activity. Um, and it's funny looking back, you see the horse and buggy in front, of the, in front of the store. And then many years later, after it's lost, you see another photo of the store and old automobiles and things like this as times are changing through the valley. Uh, ice harvesting was also a big activity on, on the river. These uh, photos were provided by um, Earl Hahn and Rudy Hahn. The Hahn family co-owned the dam during a portion of the um, 1950s up until, up until 1960s. Um, the original grist mills from 
the Mount Warner Dam are in the Millstone Building in Deerfield. So if you ever drive by there and see those beautiful millstones, those came from our dam. This is a shot of the lower dam. Um, the bridge that's in the background is Route 47 as it crosses the Mill River. Uh, this was the lower dam that, that um, powered the sawmill. This is a downstream shot from Route 47 looking down at sort of the vestiges of, of that dam. Um, the stories of floods too, you don't have a very good record of floods going back into the early 1700s, you know, but you catch them in um, the diaries and um, notes from the mill workers or the dam owners. And so they would say, and this is mostly the Connecticut River flooding, you know, remember it was pre, it was not dammed at this point either until the mainstream dams came on. So the river had a larger variability to come up and really inundate areas and it just picked the lower dam up and floated it out. That's what they said, that one day it was there and the next day it was gone. Just sort of an amazing story. Uh, this on the left are the abutments from that structure, current, current day, that's all that's left. More of that flooding photos. All right, so again, you know, when you're doing your detective work, you're gonna come along maps. And um, this is an old map, 1895, which shows the lake in its um, smaller condition of 49 acres. Um, and you can see how few houses and establishments are on around the perimeter. You can also see the ferry um, going off of Ferry Road that crossed over the Connecticut River to Ferry Road on the other side in Hatfield. And lo and behold, we have a picture of it. Um, this is, uh, if you look in the background, sort of right where those red dots are, that is Ferry Road coming down, and that is our Mill River over there in the background with Mount Warner in the very background. 1905. And the same area today, or 2014. Um, so this ferry site was really, it was really important. They were getting people across and also they would ferry hay across occasionally. Um, there were large ferries down in Hockenham and then there was another one north of us as well. All right, the importance of recreation. So this is Bob Hahn, who was a son of Rudy and who was, who was involved with the ownership of the dam. So Bob really grew up around Lake Warner and used to fish with Bab, with Bab the guy on the left, um, as well as deal with some of the boat livery and, and they were just really well-known characters around the pond and they made the paper in the 40s, catching what was really a record-sized bass. Um, somebody caught a nine-pound bass two years ago, but this seven-pounder was pretty impressive. Um, another important connection was the school, which is right next to the church on River Road, um, and the community hall. This was area was the uh, part of, housed a portion of the library of what is now in the Goodwin Library and split between the historical society's collections. Um, so this was really an important historic area in in North Hadley and Hadley. Um, and the Scots, when they owned it, also had a boat access point directly off of the Congregational Church, whereas, which, which is what this, rant, what this arch structure is. And this is the acre of land that was later donated to the town um, for the ball field area. Services on the pond, I think we saw that yesterday. Um, this is an old picture that really illustrates again sort of large scale land use. You know, you really don't see, looking back at Lake Warner, you don't see any trees on the mountain. I mean, just everything had been sort of either grazed over or cut down. Nineteen oh nine postcard showing North Hadley in the pond. They used to make these old color photographs too, all around New England and, and our area in particular. You'll find these either hand colored or old, old photographs that they made into postcards. 
And last but not least, the, the fire department used to use, so fire was a big issue, right? If you had an undeveloped section of town where you didn't even have water you know, coming up and, and the pressure that you could need to fight fires, you would occasionally have to draw from the lake or there were water pits that were dug around town to fight fires. Um, so the fire department used to use the pond and a pump to test their, to test their firefighting equipment. And that was one of the things when the, the pond going away and the care of the dam was discussed many times over the years. And in the early 1930s or so, people were sort of crying that it was such a valuable resource and firefighting was one of those resources that was important. And these are the construction pictures from 1947. All right, so how much more time do I have? About a minute. minute oh, good. <laughs> um, so there's so much to say about Lake Warner. You know, it really just um, ha has been a enormous project from dam repairs to water chestnut fighting to bacteria analysis to coordination of you know, finding who's responsible and what they're doing or what they have done or what they hope to do. You know, we just keep on trying to make those connections and, um, and sometimes have to remind people of what their jobs are. But I really encourage, you know, people who are trying to get projects going of their own in their own watersheds or want to participate in this one, you know, that we're really open to, um, to, to working with people, to teaching and, you know, learning and open to other ideas, because that really is what, where we get our strength from. So I appreciate so much everybody participating in this, and I encourage everybody to uh, reach out to somebody they know in the field or 10 people that they know in the field and continue to get the network growing and like mycelium, you know, pretty soon will be everywhere. Okay. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you, Jason. Um, and thank you everybody who participated, who shared in this. Um, please tell your friends and colleagues to sign up for the innovation contest. They can register through Eventbrite. I have, um, we're going to have from 1.30 to 2.15, our second innovation pitch session. So that's happening today. And I believe we have another innovation pitch session happening tomorrow. Please check the event website's schedule tab or look on Slack under hashtag schedule and for more announcement and updates. And thank you everybody. I was really inspired and I hope you all were. <laughs>